We got the fancy weed control slideshow today. <laughs> we got some eager weed killers, right? We're gonna do this. So yeah, thanks. Weeds. So thanks for coming. We got uh, it's our 75th anniversary this year, so it's an extra special celebration here all here at Sunnyside. Make sure you leave your name in there for the free drawing every month. We're giving away a pretty substantial prize every month. We got sale, extra sales going. Um, today is the end of 30 off roses, 30 off berries, bare root, 30 off. Last day for that as well. We'll have some more specials going there for April. So watch the emails. There's lots of goodies coming out. So everybody's got the handout. Um, this will kind of be, a, we don't need to turn this into a vocabulary class. We're going to kind of go through some basic terms. Um, just about when we talk about weeds and kind of to help you hopefully consider your options on controlling them This is a great time of year. I think to do this class because I won't speak for all of you But I like to enjoy hanging out in my yard in the summer and playing a little bit and not weeding all summer So if we can get it done now and get a head start You're gonna have a lot less work come the summer months to me March April September October are the two key, key times of year you get it cleaned up and done right You will have a lot less work the rest of the year if you did some stuff last fall, you'll probably be even a little ahead of the game and might maybe not have too many here come springtime. So um, they are the, as we say in the spring, the pop weed is popping here. Mm -hmm. If we don't get those things pulled, you're gonna have about yeah. one billion of them instead of one. So they, 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 go to, they go to seed really fast. So so we'll go through a few, you know, to weed or not to weed. That's the question, you know. <laughs> um, I think first with all gardening projects, you kind of assess where you're at. You know, what do we want to do? Um, you know, I don't mind pulling some, crawling around with the kneelers or the pad and doing some manual things, but there's certainly a lot of options out there. Um, you know, can they pull Beasley with the right tool? We got some great tools up here. She was admiring the short hula hoo, which is most useful for kind of getting into the tighter spots um, or the long one if we want to save the back. But that's a great uh, little tool. It's, they call it the hoe that wiggles. It's got a little, little give to it. But if especially these early, like this is a great one for pop weed. We don't have to worry about a tap root. We don't have to get in there um, and do a whole lot of damage. So a good tool like that. Um, I use my Hori Hori knife for just about everything. So I usually carry that in the belt. I can stab that in and pop a weed out. I can plant a bulb with it. I can do just about everything with a good good stainless steel Hori Hori knife. Kind of looks like a weapon. Be careful with them. But oh, okay. yeah, they're pretty nice. Pretty nice little oh, kind of old school that. tool. <coughs> Maybe a little. A little less version. This one even comes with a bottle opener if you need a beverage. <laughs> but uh, you know, a little. This is called a soil knife um, from a company called Radius. That's a really good sturdy tool as well. Uh, maybe not quite as sharp, but I can also use the tip sometimes and cleave a little root. It probably digs a little bit easier than some things a little sharper. If you like the really old school Cape Cod weeder, that's kind of a fun one to go. You can kind of do the same thing and work the ground a little bit like a trowel but I can get through there and do some cleaning as well. I'm um, gonna made, and then we always have the old school dandelion stabber. If you gotta get down and get the tap root out, sometimes a little bit longer one uh, works quite well. Um, you know, a big thing with me right now is, is probably, we'll look at some pictures of weeds here towards the end, but if you see what you have, you can maybe decide, do I have to pull this? Oh, look at the rain coming down. Every, yeah, everyone's gonna come in. Great. Um, <laughs> So are they really going to survive if I pull them? Do I have to pull them? Maybe if I mulch really heavy, I'll smother them and not have to go back and do uh, more work. Um, but there's some options, I think, for a few. If you're going to mulch real heavy, sometimes that might fix part of the problem as well. Um, big, the thing we're going to talk a lot about today is do I need to spray and what to spray with, kind of how to spray, um, and timing of it is going to be huge. Um, the biggest thing, again, get them before they go to seed. If I let the dandelion flower, I can watch them scatter across the whole neighborhood. And I don't mind a dandelion, it's kind of a pretty weed of all the weeds, but I don't want a thousand of them in my lawn. So if I can get them out of there early, then I'm not going to have to deal with them the entire year. I just have to worry about the neighbor's uh, lawn blowing them in, right? Mm -hmm. um, one thing that, and this is something you can always ask us, you know, those last two things. I'm, I, you know, I helped out years ago with the, with the noxious weed board a little bit, kind of deciding on some things that we shouldn't be growing around here. Um, you know, watch your yard because there are some things that you might get that you really don't want. If you're kind of like, wow, I've never seen that before, snap a picture of it, bring a little sample down. Because um, if it is something noxious, invasive, um, we don't, not going to report you to the, the police or anything. Um, but some of the state organizations are really interested in how this stuff 
propagates and kind of moves state to state, county to county, you know, uh, neighborhood to neighborhood. So we will be able to help you with something like that too. Um, and certainly IDing them. There's a bazillion weeds. You know, this is one of those one man's trash, another one's treasure. I have some people like to grow certain things that I would think are weeds, but they like them in their yard. It's your yard. You know, you can do what you like with it. Um, but there are certainly some things we're going to talk about that probably nobody likes today. Okay. So if we talk about some basic terminology first, if I have <coughs> these two types of herbicides, pre-emergent and post-emergent, does everybody kind of know when I say those two worm, those two words? If I if I don't have any weeds growing in a garden bed or my lawn, my vegetable garden, anywhere, and I choose a pre-emergent, whether it's chemical, natural, we'll show you some of both, that's something that dissolves and makes a film on my soil. Now nothing grows through that for the most part. Maybe it lasts for a season, a year, you know, depending on what product you choose. There's a lot of options out there, but sometimes if I clean a bed and I use a pre-emergent, <laughs> that might keep my bed clear till the next season kind of thing, depending on what I do at least spring to fall um, kind of thing if we go organically so that's one option it's not going to kill anything that's growing i want to make sure that's clear because a lot of people might buy a pre-emergent and think that does everything that will not do anything against what's already growing it'll just keep things from, from growing more <coughs> yes we have to be careful with bulbs you know if i'm going to plant seeds in my garden i'm not going to put a pre-emergent down can't do that in my lawn because I want to reseed in the spring or fall. There's certain things you got to be real careful with with pre-emergence. Post-emerging is everything else. You know, that's our, our, we see the little weed growing in our garden. I want to walk out and nuke it, get it sprayed so that I have death of plant, hopefully the root system, and then we just don't have it come back. So that's our other type. Again, we'll have some different options um, as far as choice. More fancy words. So this is a big one with me because I, I hope everybody kind of reads their labels. Speaking as a guy, sometimes we don't always read the label. We just go straight for the sprayer. Um, we need to read the label and check because there's what we call selective weed killers or non-selective weed killers. I can have both those terms kind of together. I can have a non-selective pre-emergent. You see what I mean when we're going? We can have all these, these different words kind of mixed together. A selective herbicide is what we use in our lawn. You know, when it comes down to it, in the entire world, there's really only two kinds of plants. If we go back to seed growth, we have what we call monocots, which is grasses and very few other things. And then we have dicots, which is everything else that we enjoy in our yard. If we go back to when that little plant started, that either has one seed leaf or it has two seed leaves, you know, in botany lesson here, 101. So that allows us to target one of those two or both, if that makes sense. So our selective weed killers we would use in our lawns. You know, we don't want to kill the grass, but I want to kill the dandelion, the clover, the other things that are growing in there that I don't want. I'm going to use a selective weed killer because that's going to not harm monocots or turf, but it's but it's but it's going to kill the other things. You know, would I use a selective weed killer in my driveway? Probably not because I would kill the dandelion, the clover, this that. It's not going to touch the grass clump that's growing or the weedy this so you got to be careful of which one we go the other one is obviously non-selective you know roundup or glyphosate it's kind of been around for years not something we carry anymore but i think most people are familiar with that term you know there's a non-selective chemical type weed killer that whatever i spray it on it's going to do the damage so that kind of is in a nutshell our two choices pre-emergent post-emergent and then again selective or non-selective to choose choose the right one now the choice to me is this as a gardener. I mean, there's gonna be some very effective organic or natural type weed killers. Maybe not gonna work on everything, but if you're like me and kind of go green, maybe a hand pull a few things and try to get them out of there. And I know some stuff I use, I'll show you here today, that works on the vast majority of problems we have, both as a selective one and a non-selective. I've got a good option on the natural way to go for both of those. If we go to chemical, synthetic, systemic, you know, traditionally again, things like Roundup, um, brush killers, you know, we do carry a few of these things for hard to take care of weeds, um, but there are things that you have to kind of consider, where am I spraying, I'm not near the vegetables, <laughs> not going to get it on a plant I want to keep, if I get any herbicide on foliage of something, I'm going to do some damage at minimum, if not kill that plant out of there, okay? 
Now, if we talk the lawn, you know, kind of first, we had lawn class a few weeks ago. Um, you know, we carry these products year round. We're warm enough now that everything works. You know, we tend to try to get things that go down to about 40, 45 degrees. Because again, I want to get this done now before things go to seed so I don't have all the weeds persisting into the summer. So we do have some uh, one great organic natural option and that's the lawn weed brew. Old Captain Jack, where are you at here? Is that the last one I probably can't reach, right? Yeah. <laughs> that looks like it. So lawn weed brew, the Bonides went smart and they've kind of did this all with the Captain Jack's logo, the funny guy with the straw hat, looks like he's hanging out in Hawaii. So if you see that label, and again, brown, brown label corner here, that's always gonna tell me that's something natural. I don't have any systemic or chemical in that. This is exactly what I use on my lawn. It does pretty much every lawn weed. It's not the best on clovers, from the, well, it'll be the really tough one, because um, it's such a waxy leaf. But everything else that creeps into my grass, this takes care of. I walk around and spray, you'll see it kind of go brown black pretty quickly disappears you know and again if I get it before it goes to seed I probably do it once or twice here and I'm done I keep up on this you know we usually have a gallon kind of ready to use sprayer it lasts me like two three years and if I walk around and do a spot spray I could probably walk my 2,000 square foot of lawn right now I might have six or seven little weeds starting out for the year I'll get them sprayed I won't have much come back if I can just keep the neighbor's seeds from blowing in I'll be just fine for the summer so um, very effective one. This is iron, so it's kind of funny, but this will kill your moss too a little bit. Um, if you want to dose your whole yard with it, that'll kill the moss as well. But the iron in this, it, it, long story short, is a grass or your lawn can absorb a massive amount of iron. A weed cannot, a typical plant cannot. Mm -hmm. So if I apply something in HDTA iron or water soluble iron, it's going to nuke the dandelion, this and that and the rest. My grass is going to turn super dark black green. It kind of looks funny when I do it because I'll look out and I'll have little green polka dots. You know, you can kind of see the dark dark on top of the light. But a really useful, again, if you're going to go natural, this is you're going to be your big choice um, to save the turf as well. The other option is corn gluten. Now I've used this quite a bit. We're trying to find a big bag package again. Um, we talked about this yesterday um, at the class as well for organic gardening because this is absolutely organic. Corn gluten is a great pre-emergent herbicide. I use this on my landscape beds. I've even put it on my lawn a couple times over the years. But again, pre-emergent. If I choose to use this, I can't, I can't seed my lawn. I want to make sure that's clear because I had a couple people dump this out, put seed and say, well, nothing grew. Well, yeah, nothing's going to grow because you put the corn gluten down with the seed. So some of the big bags are labeled as a lawn food. It actually biodegrades and turns into usable nutrients for the grass, but also will do a pretty good job as a pre-emergent. Does it last forever? Absolutely not. You know, if you're gonna go this route in your beds or your or the turf, this is something I look to do in spring and then I do it again in fall. If I have clean beds and I put that down, compost over it, put it on the lawn, do a little top dress, it'll last for the summer then maybe I make the choice, do I do that again in the fall? That gets me through the winter and then we back to spring again and we kind of do it do it twice a year. It used to be extremely cheap, I hate to say. Um, you can thank biodiesel uh, for the price increase. They eat up most of the raw ingredients these days, so the price is substantially more than it was, but it is a great environmentally total, total safe product to use around the house, okay? Now for synthetic options, you know, we've got a couple here. Um, We'll start with the last one there, and this is this is Weed Beater Complete. So I'm a pretty OCD gardener. Um, I don't do chemicals, so this isn't something I use at my place, but this is for the OCD turf guy. This is your country club golf course. This is post and pre-emergent. This is the only product we carry that does everything in one. It's absolutely chemical. There's nothing environmentally friendly about this as far as organics. It's chemical, but this, if you put this out on a spreader on your turf, it would burn what's existing and this dissolves, makes a film, and you won't have weeds go through for that season. If you do this, you've got to wait like three months before you can seed. So I do have a few people that we carry a few bags of this. We don't sell very much, but we've got a few uh, OCD guys that want to do the perfect country club yard and they don't mind a little chemical use. 
this is something that you would put down probably put your seeding let it sprout let it get established then do this Otherwise, you've got no overseeding for the spring season. We'd have to wait and do it a little bit later, okay? So that's weed beater complete. If we look at the other three options here, let me grab them. We've got Sedge Ender. we got Weed Beater Ultra. We'll hide that one for last. So Weed Beater Ultra is probably the one um, that most folks go for around here. This is looks like it's expensive. I mean, that's $36 a bottle, but if you look at the label, this is like 20,000 square feet. I mean, this is gonna last a typical homeowner like two years of spraying a decent sized lawn. This does a lot of coverage and it works very well in the cold weather. You know, I stand up here on my soapbox and talk about organics. You know, if you're gonna go the chemical route, nobody's gonna hate you forever. I'm not gonna be like, what are you doing? I'm not that, but if you, I would rather have you buy a bottle of one of these and spot spray versus getting weed and feed. We don't carry any weed and feed. I haven't sold it for 20 plus years. I think that's the worst stuff ever because if I do have some weeds and I do want to do the quick way, I can spot spray, do the same as weed and feed, still use a good organic lawn food and kind of be a little better instead of broadcasting that herbicide granular over the entire property. You know, now I've got dog feet, birds, pets, wildlife, me, everything's gonna have herbicide as I walk around and go back in the house and the rest of it. So so if we're gonna use a chemical, this is a better choice to me, do a little spot spraying as needed versus broadcasting over the entire lawn. So Weed Beater Ultra is gonna get me 45 degrees. I'll take care of just about everything in the lawn. I mean, that is chemical, but it will take care of anything you spray it on. Sedge Ender, <clears throat> Probably the last year we'll carry this. Not many people grab this these days. This is just the next phase of this. So it does all this does, but now I add in some grassy annual type weeds. Maybe I have, you know, some th some some rushes, some sedges, some other grassy weeds that grow in there. That would select out some of those as well, and suppress maybe some things like buttercup. You know, that a lot of people fight up here. That would help with that as well a little bit more so than the Weed Beater Ultra. You know, if you're really gonna clear it out, we'll see if we can stack and not fall. If we're really gonna clear it out, this sounds funny, but you get brush killer. You know, this is BK32. Um, I've seen a lot of people have great success with this. You would think, why is that crazy guy telling me to spray my lawn with brush killer? If you look at the label, I wish they made it bigger, safe to use on lawns, because again, this will not hurt my grass but this is what's going to kill horsetail, buttercup, the really hard to get stuff. Maybe you got to do it once to get that stuff out of the yard, kill the roots and all. Then we can go back to a little safer option down, down later. But if I'm really, you know, red in the face and I've got some of the worst, you know, not just blackberries and ivy, you know, as a killer out of the garden. But like I said, horsetail is probably the worst one up here. We'll have a picture of that in a minute. A buttercup, some of those ones that typical herbicides don't get quite as well, that will do the job for you on the brush killer, okay? Now with all of that, <coughs> I'm not gonna confuse you here, but I'm gonna put one more bottle up. So this is Turbo. Does anyone use a, an adhesive or a spreader sticker? So this is one you might consider having. It works with all sprays, but this is what we call it, a Jugin, a surfactant. It's got a bunch of names. Really don't care if you think of it as glue. So if I mix some of this with brush killer, my herbicides, it's gonna stick it to the leaf much better and you're gonna have much better death, which means I don't use as much chemical and you're gonna have near 100% success, especially with stuff like ivy, blackberries, clover is one that a lot of stuff just runs off. If you think of the foliage, if you put a water on it, you see it beat up and kind of run off, it's not breaking down that cell wall and killing the weed like you think it is. So something like this would be a huge benefit to add to herbicides. And that way, again, hopefully we're using less chemical, doing it very quickly, let it do the job and moving on and not having to do it again, okay? So consider that that turbo is kind of a little bonus uh, to put in there. I know for a fact Bonide in our herbicides adds a little bit of that in there for you to help work better, to have make you have success. So it does have some of that in there, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of that. You don't need much, it'll read the instructions again, but you put a little bit of that in there and that may help you get a little, little better action on it too, okay? 
So you see the last thing there. I mean, I, I wish our we would just not ever have weed feeds anymore. That's the one thing I hope gets banned here one of these days, but um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so that's the lawn. Now we have herbicides for the landscape. So if I'm gonna get, again, we talked about corn gluten. You know, if I clean a bed, I broadcast corn gluten out, I typically will compost or mulch right over the top of that. I'm going to stay very clean for the year because I've got a film now down there. My bulbs have grown up a little bit. I'm not doing seed in those areas. I'm going to have pretty good luck. I could use it in the vegetable garden. I've let my seedlings already start up. I could sprinkle that some of that down and let that keep other weeds from growing up amongst my vegetables kind of thing. So that's our option. That's again, kind of an organic pre-emergent. If we go to post-emergent, they gave this a better name finally. I think it was called botanical cleanup before. And I think a lot of people thought it was cleanup like Roundup and the same chemical. But this is totally natural. This is what I tried out last year on some different areas of my yard. This will burn pretty much anything, including blackberries and other stuff. If it's a hard to kill weed, blackberry, ivy, horsetail, you'll probably nuke the top and you'll see it try to regrow off the root. It's not gonna get maybe quite as far down on some of those. We might have to do it a few times. But gravel strip, you know, walkway, driveway. I need to spot spray in my yard a little bit. This has got no chemical in it. We're talking about things like citric acid, clove oil. I think it smells really good, to be honest with you. Um, I have 100% death with that. I spray my driveway, parking pad, the strip along the city bank with it. Um, and I keep absolutely clean gravel without weeds and it works very, very well. Um, do it on a hot day when the sun's out, give it an hour, you're going to walk back and say, holy smokes, that was quick. You see them just shrivel up and die down in the soil and you're done. Now, if I got a dandelion with a double-sized carrot tap root because it's been there for 10 years and never been pulled, I'm probably going to have to get it a couple times to get that root system killed as well. But again, if you're staying up on it, that's a really effective uh, natural way to go. They call that Captain Jack's Dead Weed Brew. So that's what we gotta be careful. We got Dead Weed Brew, non-selective, that kills everything, including grasses. Lawn Weed Brews for my turf. That won't kill my turf, but kills the rest of the broadleaf stuff as well, okay? Now, if we go to uh, chemical options, you know, to me, if you're getting to the point where you gotta spray um, with a chemical, usually it's gonna go straight to back to the brush killer. You know, I've used this on the banks outside my fence to keep the blackberries from coming in from the city property, morning glory, um, horsetail, some things like that that are going to be better to just get them nuked and kill the root system and all. Um, we'll, again, we'll talk about some of the specific hard ones later, but that would probably be my choice. Keeping in mind, it's not going to kill the grassy weeds. I've got to do kind of a little different thing, but the harder, brushy, woody, tough to kill ones that brush killer is going to get all those okay now you see the two notes at the bottom be really careful when you're spraying your landscape bed I don't care if it's organic synthetic whatever it is if I get that herbicide on a plant I don't I don't want to nuke you're gonna burn it at minimum and you may kill it if it's young so sometimes you get a you know piece of cardboard for me I'll grab a piece of cardboard that I recycle and lay it against my peony so I can spot spray that little thing the hardest thing with spraying, your eyes won't, will not see the mist, the volatilization, depending the wind, all, there's a lot of factors with this, and you will not see it until a week later. You're like, what, what's going on with that peony? It's got brown, burnt edges on all that side of the plant. Oh crap, I sprayed it with herbicide by accident. And sometimes it won't kill it, but chances are, especially if they're young, you'll do some, some damage. So, <coughs> excuse me, be real careful what you put it on um, and how you apply it so that we make sure we get it on there safely. Now, here's some general advice from me. So again, all products need to be used as directed. Read the label. You know, the EPA, our state, the county, they make them package and label this stuff in a specific manner. Um, maybe not, every state's got its own registration requirements, so it's not, a lot of this is just for Washington. They won't let us sell it unless it's really labeled in a certain way. Um, what's in it, what you use it for, when to use it, how much to use. You know, it's one of those things. Um, read the label, follow the directions, and do it right the first time. No one wants to do more work. If you don't do the right thing, you're going to probably have to go back and do it again. Or 
we do some damage to something we didn't want to. Um, I have a sprayer up here in a box. I didn't pull it out. But, you know, I keep two sprayers in my garage. One of them says herbicide. A huge Sharpie that I never can miss it saying that because if I'm going to go kill something, I want to use my herbicide sprayer. I want to go help something, I'm going to use my good sprayer. So make sure uh, we keep an herbicide sprayer. That way there's never a chance of residue, especially if you're using the chemical route. You think you washed it out, there's probably still a little bit of it in there that we want to make sure we don't get on the next time. Okay. Again, I mentioned the turbo. That spreader sticker is a great way to go with really <coughs> excuse me, waxy foliages, hard to kill things up here. You know, ivy would be at the top of my list. You know, that's a noxious weed on our state list. It doesn't belong here. Some people have it in their yard. It is what it is. But if I was going to really do ivy, not a lot of killers are going to do that unless I get a really heavy brush killer and add the adhesive to it because it's got a glue to that waxy leaves or you're just not going to get much action out of it. Okay. A big thing up here is timing. You know, timing is everything. It's raining here this morning. It might rain this afternoon. You know, all this stuff will tell you again if we read our label right on there, rain fast in an hour, rain fast in four hours. You know, you, you just need, you don't need a week of 75 degree and sunshine to make a lot of this work. It does work, <coughs> excuse me, much faster the warmer it is, but I just need that dry thing to soak it on there, let it dry on, and then I'm okay to come out. You know, that's a great question some people will ask. Well, I had to do the brush killer to get this and that. When am I safe to go back out? Once it's dried on and soaked into the plant, you know, your dog's not going to have to worry unless they eat the leaf, but your dog, your pets, the rest of it's not going to have to worry as much as long as it's dried on there. So we would keep, you know, if I spot sprayed my lawn, I'm going to let Spike hang out in the house until that's really dried on there before he goes out and runs around the grass one more time, okay? <coughs> so like we talked about, you know, get a head start in the spring. Uh-oh, did that go black? You've lost it. Too. Yeah, you've lost it for a while. <laughs> you come back? You got umbrellas. Uh, well, we'll keep reading. It'll come back on here. Something's wrong. It'll come on. That's my screensaver. So if we look at uh, this time of year, again, getting a head start in the spring is going to be key. If we can get stuff before they seed, and some things are already at that point. I know walking around, I went out last week and checked for the last few pop weeds. Um, some of the Veronica, some of the things that start really early don't care about frost. We got to get those done. If they go to seed, if you know popweed, gets the pretty little white flower. Since there's a clump, the little seed pods dry, and you walk by it, just touch it, and you can see the seeds explode and go next door about three feet. And then we got a thousand of them, and then we got a million of them. So if we get them down there early, it's a great way to go. That's a really easy one to pull, by the way, too. Sometimes we don't have to spray that one. Um, you, the best, the more foliage I have is always going to be the best kill rate. You know, I want as much leaf as I can to apply natural, any type of herbicide. The more I can get on the foliage, the better chance I'm going to have 100% death, including the root system. You know, the worst thing people do is cut something back, then spray it. You know, if you're going to kill it, spray the entire thing because I've got maximum absorption and I've got the best chance of killing that root system, okay? Um, I, this is a big one with me and when I, I don't have to use it in my yard because I do dig the weeds I get in from the bank and things. I've got kind of perimeters set up now on three sides. So hopefully they won't come back in. But if I do have to use brush killer and I do walk outside the fence and go, okay, you are not coming in and I'll do this. Sometimes I'm not even spraying. I'm brushing and I'm really careful if I had to do this in my garden. Say you got a garden bed. You've been fighting, you see three, four, eight little horsetail spears popping up here in spring. I got plants everywhere. I can't get a sprayer and go, oh yeah, let's kill those. I'm gonna kill that whole garden. There's no way I'm gonna get it on there. So I'm gonna get some really good rubber gloves on so I don't soak that into my skin. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that brush killer, maybe in a paint can, a little tub, grab a brush and I can walk around and just dab it and brush it on the leaves, the stems just like I'm spraying, I'm going to get it really focused on that one weed and not have it on everything I don't want. That's going to minimize how much gets in the soil. It's going to do all the above if we do a little brushing. So sometimes that might be an option for people that, you know, you're trying to clear an area, you're trying to clear an area. You know, I walked away for 10 years and 
this whole thing needs to go because I'm starting over again. All right, we probably spray, you know, but if I've got a garden and it's one here, one there kind of thing that I don't want a chance to get a foothold, I would consider some brushing. That sometimes is a really way to go. Okay? Is it coming back on yet? Ah, man. Let me try it here <laughs> if I do this. Because this one never does this, but let's try if I plug and unplug here. Let's see if it'll pop back up. Maybe. Still umbrellas? No, nope, certainly. <laughs> thinking. No, right? No one's it's thinking. All right, we'll, we'll, it'll come back here in a sec. So yet even more advice, last one of my advice. So reapply herbicides as needed. You know, if you go out and spray an area, um, don't walk away, you know, go back and check it in just a week or two and see if anything is starting to come back off the root system. You know, I mentioned an old one that's got a tap root halfway to China. You know, you're gonna, maybe you gotta get it a couple times to get 100% death. So walk, walk back and assess the area because if I can see that thing trying to grow again and I nuke it a second time, I'm probably going to be good to go. Then we're going to get the root system and be done with it once and for all. Okay? Um, get the right tool for the right job. We talked about a couple of tool options here. Some things to make your life easier. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy. I got huge hands. I may like different tools than he likes or she's likes kind of thing. So do what's right for you. I mean, go in there and feel it. Kind of go, okay, if I'm down here crawling around, am I going to kill my back? Is it going to hurt my knees? You know, get a good kneeling pad. I got knee pads. I got a really thick, cushy kneeler that's comfortable to kind of crawl around on and do some of this. Hula is a great tool if you have mulched beds. If I have hard pan or compacted soil, it's not going to dig in quite as easy. You know, if I have a dandelion and I use a hula hoo, it's just going to saw the root off and then it's going to come back up off the root system. So for some weeds, it's really good to start. Um, and certainly like the one this year, the one this time of year again, is that popweed. I mean, that's a really easy thing to, to kind of trowel off the surface, run around, grab my pile, throw it in the yard waste, and move on. You know, it's not, not a bad one to use at all, okay? I even got a designated screwdriver in my garage. I can go through and kind of gouge out the cracks in the driveway and the sidewalk and that kind of stuff, again, without having to, to go out and spray quite a bit, okay? Mulch is always a huge one. You know, I brought up bark here compost whatever your choice is for mulch you know I put down that much mulch it's really gonna do me no good it's gonna help but it's gonna not, not gonna suppress weeds I mean we're talking about a two three a, a four inch layer of mulch if you take the time to clean an area we go back to mulch it you're gonna keep it clean for the season I mean I mulched last year in the spring I still don't have much weeds growing anywhere in the gardens and I got quite a bit of garden beds now this summer they'll probably start coming back as the mulch has worked its way in and we'll do it again and then we'll be ready to go for another season or two okay so bark the one thing i'll say with bark is if you do heavy bark um it, versus compost make sure you add some fertilizer underneath your bark if we if we put down heavy bark that wood will rot and it takes all the nitrogen out of the soil a lot of people come back after barking their yard in two three months and say everything looks yellow it's off color it's not really dark green anymore when I if, if I did bark I would honestly go for a bag of organic lawn food and just broadcast that lawn food over that entire bed and put the bark right on top of it now it's got some extra fertilizer there to help the de decomposition process with compost don't have to worry about it compost is always an add or not a taker away so if I put compost on that's what I use grape mulch <coughs> and it adds to the soil not going to take the nitrogen out okay um if you cut down a tree you know anybody cuts down an old plant did you come back up yet still nope. umbrellas i'm sorry so cut down a cut down a stump or a tree or something our options are a we, we want to grind that thing out of there feasibly at some point if i want to replant but let's just say i want to cut it down and walk away for a while i'm not sure what i want to do really check what kind of tree it is and see if it'll sucker back off the root system. There's a lot of stuff I see gets chopped off and then they come back and I've got sprouts coming out for hundreds of feet in my lawn because now the roots are trying to regrow that same plant. You know, things like locust. You know, there's a lot of trees that will try to re-sprout. So if you cut it down, get a little drill out, cut that the stump flat, drill some holes in the top, and then we would pour like a either well, not that bottle, the little liquid. You know a stump vine killer that I could paint on that 
or I can get a powder that I can actually pour into those holes, cover it back up with the shavings, and that'll really speed up uh, the rotting of the trunk and keep it hopefully from re-sprouting at all. Um, sometimes, again, a grinder is pretty easy to have somebody come and just get it out of there and be done with it. Uh, but be careful sometimes walking away because I, I hear it a bunch of times every year from customers like, had a tree taken down, man, now I got saplings over my entire lawn where the root system was. And some plants will, will keep coming unless we get, again, a killer or have that stump ground out there to take care of it. Okay, so we got no pictures. I have a question about cutting <clears throat> stumps. If you cut down a lilac and you get all those stupid little suckers, mm -hmm. how do you get rid of those? I even I put the stump on the Yeah, on the stump. stump. Um, it it'll it, eventually it will land because I did the same thing with a huge one in my yard about two years ago, and this is the first year I got nothing, and I'm like sweet. I'm back okay. to now. I can put a new plant in there. And be so done with stay it. on top of the stump. Stay on top of okay. the stump. Um, you know, again, if you if you you know that's not a spray thing to me because it's probably coming up everywhere. Maybe I get a little dab of brush killer, if mm -hmm. you don't mind a little chemical, and just if you paint those, mm -hmm. now you'll get into the root system a little quicker and be done okay. with it. But I think if you if you cut it off and you're patient, it'll it'll it will stop coming back. Mine, we're talking 50 years old, and the main trunk is like literally that big. Oh, yeah, and so I asked, and I'm good after two years. It, last year, yes, I had to go do some cutting and kind of watch it, but after that, yeah, I'm done with it. Okay. So still no pictures. All right, hold on a minute. Let me see. All right, how about this? Ask me some more questions while I try to get this going. Because <laughs> this is the fun part. We get to look at some actual oh, weeds. Oh, we got some bed straw. You can see it? Yeah. Okay, and you can see all the text around it? Can we uh, live with that? Or is yeah. that just a picture? Just no, you have the picture. No, it's, it's you got the text around it. All right, so let's see. Let's try it. Maybe it'll like it again here. Let's try. Oh, you're back. Can we yes. Go? There you go. There, up back, go back. There you go. Yes. I don't know how, but that's pure luck, I guess. So here's a few that I've kind of taken out my house over the years, you know, that I just kind of say, okay, that's one I don't want to come back. Now this is one we call bed straw. Has anyone seen that little creature growing in their sticky? yard? It is sticky. Yeah, it is yeah, nasty. nasty. Oh. If you let it bloom, this to me is the vine popweed. If I let that thing bloom, it's going to stick to your arm, your clothes. And you look down and you're like, oh wow, I got about a thousand seeds stuck to me. <laughs> yeah. Which again, if we talk evolution and mother nature, that's a smart little weed because yeah. any <laughs> creature that walks by is going to say, oh great, I'll take your seeds and move them all over your yard mm -hmm. for you. Um, that is one, it pulls really easily, but man, do not let that stuff get going. I found a patch of that on my neighbor's side at one of my fences was I did him a favor. It was like, all right, you are out of here mm -hmm. because it was poking through the slats of the yeah. fence and it was going to... <coughs> take over my yard wherever it wanted to so that's one we want to get for sure early if we do plantain anyone recognize that little guy yeah. <coughs> that's not as bad as clover but that's a really tough one because I got a flat little rosette of foliage mm -hmm. again the seeds come up and I'll have more but I haven't sometimes not a lot of stuff will soak into those very well that's one I'd use for sure a good spray and maybe add the turbo the spider sticker in there as well if we talk buttercup everybody's got buttercup right <coughs> um, this one if I've got wet number one if you've got some drainage issues in the winter doesn't mind some clay even that's a hard one to get out of clay uh, buttercup is one that will never stop if I let buttercup keep coming it grows and then reroots itself and then reroots itself and it'll just travel. You could have a whole yard of buttercup if you like pretty little yellow flowers. But if I'm going to try to eradicate that, get it out early. Sometimes it's hard to pull. <coughs> Excuse me. If I find a patch of it, you know, you got to kind of dig and pull and dig and pull and try to get everything out because I think most people <laughs> pull it and then it comes right back to the way it was before because we don't get the root system out of there. That's one again. That dead weed brew will work. I've had it work on it before, and I had to get it twice if it was there for a while. It'll work. All the chemical sprays will do a great job. If I have that in my lawn, if that's usually what people complain about more than others in the lawn, I hate to say that's a really tough one. We're probably going to have to get the brush killer on there one time and spot spray it because then I'll nuke it roots and all and not have it come back. 
I have not, I should knock on wood here, I don't have it in my lawn luckily ever um, and I don't know that my iron would do a great job with that. That's going to be a little, little tougher to control one. Mr. Dandelion, you know we can make salad out of it. It's really pretty. My boy, my two sons walk out and you know blow seeds all over for me. Boy, thanks, Max. That was wonderful. Um, you know I don't have much. This is one I, everybody fights up here. I mean, you get dandelion, you got a big tap root. It spreads pretty easily. We get about a billion seeds out of one of those little uh, flowers when they're done producing. Uh, certainly, if we mow our grass, we cut the flowers off, and you end up with just a big clump of the foliage. Um, but as soon as you don't mow, here it comes, it's going to bloom for you. Um, but again, if we get it early in the season, these are already up, they already look green. I walked around an area I cleared last year for some new vegetable beds. I got five or six coming back. And probably a couple of those have been there for a long time. So I'll probably get the shovel out and see how deep the roots are. And then I can decide if I'm going to spray or just, or just hand dig them real quick. But certainly one, um, you know, some people don't mind them. You know, it's your yard again. I think, you know, it's a pretty flower. You know, they are edible, but I just, I don't want them in my grass, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, that is one, again, I think just needs to go. You know, I mm, wish people oh, would quit geez. buying ivy. Um, we don't sell ivy, haven't sold it for many, many years here. Um, we're at the last nursery I ran. Um, everybody thinks it's native up here, it is not. Um, the problem is this, that's a picture I took down by Forest Park um, a few years ago. It just chokes out everything. I mean, I've seen ivy up stop signs in my neighborhood where some lady just let it grow up my other neighbors got it in her whole banks covered with it it's probably if she doesn't cut it it's halfway across the road you drive over the thing um it's just a tough tough plant um not one you're probably going to have much luck clearing i mean i've had some people if you really dig in it may be a chore and a half to try to dig out a bed of ivy and get the root system and not have it come back um that's a spray candidate. You know, if you really want to get rid of ivy, I think you've got to spray and you've got to use the adhesive. That is one. Nothing's going to stick to those glossy green leaves. That's a really tough one, I think, to get out. Um, but worth it. You know, if you know ivy and you leave it, it's going to take whatever you got. You know, it'll climb, it'll cling, it roots to brick, to wood, to fences, to all the above, and it'll never stop unless you control it. Now, again, I see lots of yards around. It's a great ground cover. I kind of call it a rat's nest for a ground cover because it's kind of tall and there'll be all kinds of creatures hiding out underneath there. Um, but people that maintain it and mow it, it, you know, a little slope or whatever, you know, that's a little different. But man, if you live by Greenbelt, you know, a park, any kind of native area, just don't do ivy because it's one that just takes over everything. There's my other neighbor across the street oh, no. with my favorite fireweed. Looks awful pretty in bloom, but holy smokes that gives out some seeds and that's one that blows in the wind and I do have to pluck a few of those out of my yard because it blows across the street and gets into my front beds um, fireweeds again on that noxious weed list I kind of laugh because I see some places sell this which <laughs> I'm not sure why um, but again it's it's a pretty plant if it just didn't grow so big and seed so easily and take over you know essentially which I guess that's why they call it a weed right <laughs> Ah, uh, the blackberry. That's up the street from my house across from the new Y there in Everett. There's a whole hillside covered with it uh, below some houses. Um, you know, blackberry is blackberry. You know, I think everybody's battled that at some point in their gardening life. Um, this is not a Northwest native. I hear people talk about blackberry. Oh, well, it belongs here and it grows here. This is all Himalayan blackberry. It never even belonged here in the first place. But we've got the perfect wet, mild climate for it just to grow and take over everything. Um, native blackberries I keep you know I've got trailing blackberries I put on my bank because I want the little berries I mean there's some great native blackberries we can certainly eat them you know that's the benefit of having any kind of blackberry but <laughs> if I don't control blackberry that's what I got it's gonna bury my house my yard my garage my car <laughs> and anything in between um, and that's another one grows out arches as soon as it touches the ground you got another root system a really tough one to dig. I don't think you're ever going to get um, all of the, the roots out if we dig it. That to me is the poster child for how to spray with brush killer. Whether I paint it or spray it, either way, everybody has blackberry wants to get rid of it. They cut it off, then they come down here and go buy a bottle and then they go home and spray. Don't cut it off. Spring is the perfect time to nuke blackberry and get near 100% death on it, even old ones 
but don't cut it off. The more leaves I have, the more spray gets to the root and you'll win. If you chop it off and spray what's left, you're not going to get the amount of herbicide into the root system and nuke it out of there. What if you had a little, um, <coughs> you've cleared it and you got little ones popping up. I've cut those and put the stump out on it. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, because typically with blackberry, if it's been there a while, you know, you're going to spray, you're going to see it melt and shrivel. Yes, I won. You're going to go back in two weeks and go, okay, I see some new pieces coming off because that's a massive root system. Now I can spray again and you probably win. If you walk away, you're going to have the same thing happen. My neighbor, the other direction, cleared his finally <coughs> after 20 years. I was like, yes, he's going to plant that bank. Never did anything with it. Yeah, I think it looks more now than it did before he sprayed and cut them out of there. So, I mean, it, it'll come back pretty, pretty quick. There's the other, <coughs> excuse me, there's the other evil creature, the horsetail. So, everybody probably knows horsetail. Um, the problem with horsetail is, again, wet, clay, boggy yes, soils so in the winter, which we have all three of them typically in the wet winters up here. That's a really tough one. That's probably that and Ivy, I think, are the two toughest ones that we've talked about today. Um, horsetail <coughs> has got to go brush killer. I mean, there's just no other qualms about it. If you look online, I don't know where it is in your yard. Um, if you get horticultural vinegar, which is really strong acetic acid, not the stuff you buy in the grocery store. <laughs> this is a different thing. You'll get most of those weeds done with with that with acetic acid or real heavy vinegar solution maybe if you didn't want to go the brush killer route it still smells like vinegar it'll smell the yard for a little bit but it does pretty well on a lot of hard to come by things um that would be your natural you know option where we're going straight for the brush killer um this is another one don't cut it off don't if you pinch the spears out of the ground you're just going to have three times more because the problem with horsetail is the root system is really deep. I mean, we kind of joke like halfway to China, Oops. not quite that, but it really is. I mean, you're talking about feet down the soil, not inches, not a foot, but feet. And you can dig and you can dig and you can probably follow that root system. It's like a little web underneath the ground there, about three, four feet in the, in the ground. And unless you get every single little piece of root, it's just going to come back. I mean, it may not be for a year or till the fall, but it's just going to grow right back off that root at some point. This is something I I volunteer a lot down at the Arboretum in Everett there at Legion Park. And this is something we really fight, um, to be honest with you, in certain areas, and it's because crappy soil got brought in, you know, when, the, when the, the city or we got a delivery from this company, that company, if it's got a piece of horsetail in it and it gets into a new garden, oh, sweet, I got a new home, let's take off. And I don't know if anybody knows the Arboretum, but I worked on a, a new horizontal rock garden down there mm -hmm. that I literally have to take it all apart and totally start over now because the soil that was brought in by uh, the city folks had horsetail in it. So now, no matter what I do, where I plant it, I've tried brushing this, I've tried doing that, it's just horsetail everywhere. And if we really want to keep it clean, we're going to have to dig it all out, get rid of it, build it back up, and start over again, which is where... I'm at for 2023 here in 2024. So, horsetail's a tough one. Again, I think it's a, you know, I have a big open area that's nothing but horsetail. Sweet, spray it, you know, if you want to start over again. Um, if I've got one here, one there that just seemed to pop up um, in the lawn or the garden beds, um, we, we would want to brush something on. Brush killer, I can spot spray in my yard, or I can mix this again in that paint can and walk around and really get it on those spears and you'll get pretty good depth especially if we can get it early you're gonna have to probably do it a couple of times but you can win so what are you brushing on to like a horsetail well horsetail again if it's open i can spray maybe get a piece of cardboard i can spray and not get it on a plant but if i get that on there if i got a paintbrush or one of those little foam pads soak up some herbicide and really just dab it up and down as long as i can see liquid get on that foliage sometimes it'll run down that center stem a little bit you know you got enough on it'll nuke it it's okay and it probably gets down to here a little bit of root left maybe i try to come up one more time then you can get it that second time it's after really it comes. To cover almost the entire if you can yeah again and again I, I think for most people in the garden the the dabbing or painting option is going to be a lot safer because nothing will be worse than 
sweet, I got eight horsetails, I'm gonna nuke them, and then you come out and you got your peony, the mm -hmm. azalea, and everything else that was in between, that would not be good. Because it's not like, this is soil poison, if that makes sense, it's not like, you know, if I, if I did that and a little drips onto the ground, it's not like it's gonna kill the soil and all the plants in there. So we, we'd keep it to a minimum for sure, and get gloves on, because again, you don't want this getting into your, your skin, but I can dab it on there pretty easily and get, get it to do the job. Now this is a plant that's tough for me because uh, we sell lamium here. A lot of people nurseries do. It's a ground cover. Um, it's not the weedy lamium, although if you plant lamium as a ground cover in the shade, it'll do the job and cover it up. And it is really pretty in bloom. There's some, there's some fun uh, different lamiums out there. Um, but it'll spread, it'll seed, it'll fill up an area. You just kind of have to learn when to tell it to stop. You know, I don't want that growing into my grass. I don't want it moving into that area. You can, it's really easy to pull. You can kind of control the perimeter of it. But certainly if you have one of the weedy lamiums, that's again, something I can pull pretty easily um, or apply either one of the herbicides. The, the natural dead weed blue would, would, would be uh, plenty, plenty to use on that. I don't have to go to a, a heavy chemical to get the lamiums out of there. You know, we kind of joke, well, shit, it's kind of a joke for me, but for years I said, I'm not planting anything in my yard that has weed in the common name. You know, bugle <laughs> weed or carpet weed or this weed or that weed, because they're all great ornamentals that we would use in our yard, but there's probably a reason why that is part of the common name, because somewhere where it came from, it tends to take over a little bit more. So for some gardens, probably a great choice, but probably not for mine. We'll leave it at that. Uh, morning glory is a tough one, you know um, This is one you can get death with a lot of things and not have to go chemical But get this early if you let morning glory bloom and go to seed You're gonna have one bazillion of them and the hardest thing with morning glory is this is one I've really fought at my house in Everett to be honest because it's got seeded on some of the outside fence areas And it just never stops growing. I have great soil that does not. And if I'm a morning glory sweet, I want to come in there because you've got nutrition. This bank has nothing for me. So I've set barriers. I think I've got it gone here. It took me a few years to say no more morning glory coming into my side yard. Um, and I have not seen it for two years. I'll knock on wood after yeah, class. Takes a while. Um, but it will take a little bit of time. The problem with morning glory is the, the root system. I mean, it's not super deep typically. But if you've got morning glory and you ripped it off and you dug down there, you're going to find wow. just an intertwined mass of roots that never stops. And as you cut it off, sweet, you made two now. You know, you got to dig the whole root if you're going to get it out of there. I think that's a, a definitely a candidate for a spray. The, you could get the natural vinegar. I got it out before I got into this, so I don't know if that will do it. I certainly will try it if I see it pop up again. Um, but certainly the brush killers and stuff, 100% death if I get morning glory. That's not, not a big woody plant. It's just a mass of roots that you will get killed with the, with something like brush killer. Uh, nightshade looks awful pretty. Anyone we'll get nightshade? So that's a poisonous plant, A, and B, that's a nasty weed too. Um, it's kind of funny, but this is in the tomato family, potato family. You can kind of see the, the flower there. That's kind of our, and you can see the red berries in the corner. Tried to get both. Because um, that red berry is super poisonous. That is not something you want growing in your yard uh, You'll get little friends from the birds here and there uh, They'll leave you some more seedlings again one that if you can get it early You can get it out of there if you let that go for a couple years You're gonna have a really tough time getting the whole root system pulled and the rest of it. So uh, Probably a spray candidate Maybe if you can find them when they're young you can just pop them out and be done with it But once they get a pretty good root system, uh, that's one that will take over a little bit as well. Uh, geraniums. Now this is Robert's geraniums, and I'm not saying geraniums are all weeds. That's not it, because there's lots of lovely perennial geraniums, and we grow a lot of annual geraniums. But just be careful what geraniums. Uh, one of our staff, we were talking about weeds yesterday, and she's like, "That's it. I never knew what it was because I was showing her the slideshow." She said, "My husband saw that and thought it was the prettiest little geranium, so we brought it home, and now it's taking over my whole yard." <laughs> um, so there are some noxious weed geraniums again that are on the noxious weed list for the state that's one of them there are native ones that look kind of close to this as well but if I've got shade I've got moisture I've got leaf debris humus this is the kind of stuff that's gonna love those areas so really watch your your shade gardens your, if you're by a green belt kind of those perimeters 
Um, cause this is a tough one to get out once it gets started. If I get a massive root system, again, it's not one you're going to be able to pull. You always leave a root. You'll never get it all pulled out of there. Uh, but certainly one that we could, we could spray a little bit. There's one that I have a, these next two are personal battles with me. These are the two that I work on at my house more than others. Oxalis, and probably everybody recognizes that, right? <laughs> so it kind of looks like, almost like micro clover. You know, super tight to the ground. It can be green. You can have dark leafed ones, which are kind of pretty actually. But they are weeds. They always bloom yellow. And it's kind of like we talked about a couple earlier. If I let that bloom, kind of like the pop weed, and I let that seed capsule on there, <coughs> they're pretty big seeds and I can feel them. Like if I'm like, ah, oh, God, I missed one and I go to pull it, I touch that thing, I can yeah. feel them like hit my <laughs> arm. I mean, you, you get let oxalis go to seed, you're going to have, again, a massive amount of ground cover oxalis. I kind of, for fun, left some dark ones in my little rockery along the driveway. So I'm like, it looks kind of cool, but I'm careful. Like the edge gets pulled, that is good. I don't want it in my lawn, and I don't want it getting into the planting bed quite as much because it is a kind of a pretty little plant. Um, being like clover, it's a tough one to spray. That's one of those plants that has that right leaf texture that a lot of stuff won't soak in really well. So that's another one again. You can get it with natural or chemical herbicide that we would want to use that spreader sticker and again get it early before it flowers. That's one sometimes goes all through the winter. If we don't get very cold, it sits there and says, oh wait, wait, wait. And if my couple of you have them, they're probably already starting to bloom now and you'll start to get some some seeds out of them. So watch that oxalis. This is one I fight on the bank, you know, the, the city bank. So sorrel, um, if you let it go for a while, you kind of get a little bit more foliage and you get those big kind of beigey flower spikes on it. Um, I call it the rubber root plant because if you've ever tried to pull sorrel out, you find one and if you've got compost, it just pulls up with the root. Oh, there's another one, there's another one. It's like a spider web, you know, it goes everywhere. Um, if you can get it young again, very easy to pull out of there. It's not, doesn't have a super deep root system. But if it's moist, you use mulch, it's on there, um, you're going to need to do a little bit of spraying probably because that's an easy one to spray. I can get that with my, my dead weed brew. It works for me perfectly. Um, or, or we spot spray with a little chemical as well. There's the pop weed. <laughs> Had to put one of those in there. So that's one again right now. This is typically a February, March, April thing. Once we dry out, it tends to disappear. But... Whatever you didn't pull left you about one billion seeds and then when it rains in the fall you're going to have even more pop weed to enjoy in the yard. So um, try to get that one pulled. They're very easy to pull. If you've got mulch beds, I don't even know if you need a hula hoe. You can walk around just pull them out of the ground. They're really easy to pull. But take the time to do it now early so you don't have 50 times more of them come September, October when the rain comes in the fall. And the Speedwell, Veronica. So, you know, again, we sell some... Veronica's that belong in the yard. This is our the little creepy weed speed well that we do see sometimes. It's got a pretty little blue flower, but I don't like it in my grass. I usually see this more at the in the lawn, the turf areas, maybe the edge of beds where it creeps out of the lawn a little bit. Another easy one to pull. The iron spray works great in the lawn. I use it all the time for that. Um, or in the beds, we can use either one. That, you'll get easy spray for, for the speed well. The evil thistle, if it doesn't make you bleed first, you know, that's one. Again, not everybody gets around here. It probably depends on where you live a little bit more. But if I let Canadian thistle or any kind of thistle get a foothold, that's a shrub, you know, spiky shrub that gets pretty big. And I let that thing go to seed, I'm going to have one bazillion of them. This is another one we fight down to Arboretum a little bit with bad soil. A piece of that thistle root comes in, gets a chance to colonize. I mean, there'll be a... 20 foot by 20 foot patch of thistle that's really a chore to dig out because we can't spray down there so it's a tough one to, to pull but if we watch it early thistle i think most people know the little spiky spiny leaves of thistle and if we can get them when they're coming up you can get them out of there and be done with it don't let them get towards bloom stage or then we get the seeds everywhere <laughs> 